Hey YouTube, it's Mike Mallion here, aka Mallion Drum, and I'm here to show you around my studio. This is where I basically do everything that I do and where I've pretty much put most of the content out that I've ever done. This is where I stream my drums from and I'm gonna show you kind of how I've made this space work, uh, some of the equipment that I use, the drums, the cymbals, and um, yeah, just pretty much just showing you around how to make a space like this work and some of the cooler modular elements about it. So starting off, let's have a look at this desk area over here. So this is the desk that I work from when I'm doing any editing or, you know, composition or whatnot. Um, this desk, I, there's a bit of a story behind it. I kind of, when I was having my injury issues, I needed something that I could get my posture like absolutely nailed. So as you can see with the desk here, you could put the shelves and everything at whatever height you want. The desk is called an IKEA jerker and it has all of these bits and bobs that you can add to it. It's discontinued sadly. They don't make it anymore. They haven't done for years, but you can find them secondhand every now and again. Someone will just be getting rid of a jerker and there are whole communities dedicated to like, you know, keeping it alive. Yeah, the main reason for going for this desk was because ev like everything's completely modular. So I sat and uh, and I worked out exactly where I needed to sit, like to keep my back straight, to keep my hips, hips from hurting, I had to kind of really go there. And the only way I could think of to do that was to go modular. Um, but what I then discovered was I needed to move the desk around sometimes. So we fitted wheels to the bottom of the desk. Sometimes I take this whole setup and I'll rotate it so that it's facing down the room and then that's what I'll do my critical mixing with. But recently I've gotten quite used to the sound of everything here um, and I've got a Sonarworks profile which is working nicely here. So this is kind of staying where it is for now but occasionally I'll roll it over and I've marked out the floor so that I know exactly that the desk is in the right place when I put my Sonarworks profile back on. For those of you who don't know what Sonarworks reference is, it's an amazing piece of software that makes your speakers a bit more calibrated in the room. Um, so every room has kind of like peaks and troughs in terms of areas of the bandwidth of the audio signal, of the EQ you might call it, where in the room it affects it and some areas get louder and some areas get quieter and there's lots of phase and acoustician knowledge involved in that, but essentially this software you use. I keep this microphone out all the time, but yeah, you, you point this microphone around and it tells you where to go and it will build a profile of your room. It won't fix everything. It certainly doesn't fix flutter echo, like glass and stuff, but it will handle quite a lot of stuff. So with treatment is a great option, but it works really well on its own. So when my hip injury was really bad, I realized that I needed something that could be sit stand. I started, I remember, I think I was, um, really struggling and I made myself a standing desk using a keyboard stand and a guitar case and uh, I was so happy with that setup that I actually made myself, I, I think I spent like four hours just being creative for the first time in ages and I think that's when I made that um, Meshuggah versus Donald Trump saying billions, um, that's when I made that video and I just smashed it out in like three or four hours. I just had so much fun because I felt like it's sitting at the desk hurt so much at that point that being able to stand for a while was amazing. Then I realized you can get on Amazon um, these sit stand frames. So me and my dad, we bolted one to the bottom of this desk and now I have to be a bit careful every time I do it because there's lots of stuff all over the place, but essentially I can raise or lower the desk to exactly where I need it to be and um, yeah, it's pretty great because I can kind of just, it's even better than having everything in a modular capability because, you know, I can just go, well, my back hurts a little bit, I'll just sit up a bit more and I can just bring everything up. Even better than that, I can bring the whole desk right up and I can, you know, wire stuff in, I've got my router under here and stuff and I can kind of not be like bending over and, you know, screwing around. So that was a really worthwhile investment as well. But yeah, with the wheels, um, the sit-stand desk lowers it onto the wheels. So that means it's a stable desk when it needs to be, and it's a rolling desk when it needs to be, but it means it's not always sitting on those wheels, which will probably prolong the life of them. Anyway, let's have a look at some of the gear that I'm using here. So this is the computer that I've been using. The shell is the same as it has been for about eight years, but since I started the stream, I realized I was gonna need a more powerful computer. 
once I upgraded my graphics card to a uh, GTX 1080 Ti, that basically killed my power supply and I had to upgrade from there. So I figured, screw it, go for, um, a, well, basically my motherboard that I had in the computer couldn't handle overclocking after that at all. It was like, it was just, it just didn't run stably after that. So something went wrong and I just went, you know what, screw it, upgrade everything. So yeah, I went for a Ryzen, X, uh, the 3800X, the Series 7, I think, and it's an insane CPU. I've got that on a gigabyte board, which works really nicely. The 1080 Ti runs so well with it. Um, loads of random hard drives and an old DVD drive, and it just it just works really well. There's also a Blackmagic Deck Link card in here, which I've been using as my only proper input, usually for the Blackmagic camera while I'm streaming. But yeah, now that I have the ATEM uh, camera switcher, the Blackmagic ATEM Mini, um, I can now kind of that that slot is sort of just extra because I'll usually I think I'll handle all four inputs on one thing but um, if I want to have a fifth input I can totally use that which is great but yeah also it can capture at 4k which is awesome and everything on the ATEM is 1080 so and that can actually allow me to use the computer as uh, as my main device um, in terms of software stuff that I normally find myself using so I run Cubase Pro 10.5 as my main DAW, my only DAW. I've been using Cubase since I was a kid, so it's just the door I'm most familiar with. And um, yeah, just works really well for everything I need. Uh, if I'm doing productions that involve vocals, the auto-tuning inside, well, not auto-tuning, but pitch correction, that it's like as good as Melodyne to my ear. And um, yeah, it's just a great solid piece of kit. I can comp really quickly with it. It's uh, it's awesome. I just couldn't find myself using anything else these days. Other than that, I use DaVinci Resolve for my video editing if I'm editing the videos myself. Normally nowadays these videos are being edited uh, by other people because I'm just too busy to edit them lately. But yeah, um, also just using OBS Studio for streaming and a variety of different other bits and bobs just to kind of make things work. But pretty much of those are like the three core programs that are making me able to do everything that I'm doing nowadays. So I use Adam A7 speakers. These I've had for forever. I love them. They really work nicely. They definitely have like a harsh top end, like a really strong, powerful cutting top end. But I find that works really well because a lot of the time I'm EQing out cymbals or harshness of some degree. So I really like to dive in and know exactly what I'm dealing with. And I've just had the speakers for so long. I've never tried the A7Xs, the new model. I've only ever had these A7s and I, I really like them. I think they're great. So I have a few different interfaces that I use. First off, I wanna talk about my control surface over here. This is great because it takes all the inputs from various devices around the room and it sums them all down into one place where I can turn the speakers up or down. I can mute stuff. I can, you know, dim and mono things. I can also control headphone outputs from here, uh, which is mega useful. But the best feature about this thing, which I'm gonna talk about more in a streaming audio tutorial to show how I capture audio and like an easy way to capture stuff. This is my controller keyboard. Um, I got this in Australia, a wonderful chap named Fabian. Malabello, who uh, is a wonderful human and a great uh, video game music connoisseur and a video game music agent. When the algorithm played uh, the second Australian tour, the first being Big Day Out, the second straight afterwards being a regional tour with 12 Foot Ninja that they called the Trollburger Tour, um, we stayed at Fabian's house, me and Remy, for two weeks or so. and. During the process, we randomly saw this opportunity to bulk buy a bunch of keyboards and try and fix them and sell them off. So we bought like 10, 12 keyboards, this one being the best of the lot. Um, and we, I couldn't fix them. I tried my best, but I, I just couldn't fix them. So it was a massive wasted purchase. But Fabian basically just said, dude, you can just take this keyboard back with you. Like, it's totally fine. So I've, I've had it from, from a school in Australia. It's come here and I use this for all my keyboard drum stuff. And um, I have another keyboard I'll show you in a minute, my, my Nord. But this is what I'm using whenever I'm doing keyboard drum stuff. It's just got a really simple action. It's called a, an Edirol. PCR 300 and it's real basic the faders are all broken I don't touch the faders I just use the keys for what they're good for sometimes I'll, I'll set these buttons up to do um, key switches for Odin or uh, something else but yeah for the most part just the keys and these buttons and the uh, pitch control and everything works totally fine so yeah 
that does the job. I also have a audio interface here, which is a Native Instruments uh, Complete Audio 6, the original one. And this has quite nice preamps on it, so I tend to use that when it's only got two mic inputs. So I'll use that normally when I'm tracking anything on the Nord, or if I'm tracking a vocalist, for example, and I want nice preamps. But the piece de resistance of the audio capture that I'm using is actually this unit over here. I'll take you over here and show you. So the main thing that I'm using to capture all my drum audio and everything is actually this Behringer XR18 mixer. So this is awesome. It has 16 microphone preamps and it's got a great onboard mixer. That's what it's designed to be. Uh, more than just an audio interface, it will handle the mix of any show that you can really throw at it. Um, of course, I'm sure there are better mixes out there, but it totally does the job. And anytime I'm ever streaming, this is what's handling all of the audio. So it's got great um, effects in it, compressors, uh, even guitar amps and stuff, which I've used live. I've had a guitarist turn up to a show I was doing in front of house once before and uh, just didn't have an amp, so I just plugged him directly into the front of the board and uh, put an amp sim on, ran him through the monitor, and he loved it. It was awesome. It was incredible to be able to do that. But I don't do so much front of house anymore. I, I stopped doing that a bit before Corona hit anyway. So, But it's great to have that piece of kit. But it works as a great audio interface. It's a bit too slow to monitor through the box, so I build a mix in there and I just listen to that. And it's a really low latency mix. It's probably similar in terms of latency to what a Thunderbolt interface is like. So you're hearing like instant response, then you build a new mix for your playback once you've recorded stuff. But it's awesome to just kind of have that mix happening that you can control via the phone and stuff like that. And it's got like six aux outputs and ultranet, which is ridiculous. You can use one Cat5 cable to just like plug any amount of other mixes in and it, they can all make their own mixes based on the 16 channels of audio they're receiving. The thing that kills me about this is how ridiculously cheap it was. It used to be about 600 quid when it first came out, but they dropped the price a few years back or a year or two back to uh, about 330 pounds. And I was just like, well, like there's nothing that has that much connectivity and that many features for that money. Like it just doesn't exist. So I picked it up on a whim kind of, and it's just been so useful. It's at the heart of my, uh, of my streams. And so at some point I'm going to be upgrading and uh, getting some proper, you know, higher quality audio interfaces and stuff. But, um, and I'll be getting those mainly because I've got so many nice plugins that I really want to use. And I have like a mixing technique that with side chains and stuff like that and noise gates that I can't quite get that with the, with, with that mixer, but you know, anyway, it's good enough for now. It sounds great. Everyone I'm recording for loves the sound of the drums that come through. I think a lot of people knock preamps like that um, just because they have the word Behringer on it. But what they don't understand is that like, if you're recording a drum kit, you know, you don't really need the fidelity of insane preamps. Yes, of course they add a lot, but like there are much more important things like the sound of the kit and the symbols themselves, the sound of the room and the way the player hits them are the three most important things. So, you know, the next time you're looking at like, how is that sounding so good? Chances are it's not the preamps. It's one of those other three things or all of them in combination. And this room is not the best sounding room in the world. I mean, as you can see, it's full of duvets and foam and everything. It's just all about making a dead space, but it sounds really open and it feels really nice to be in. It's a little congested in the low end, but like it's nothing you can't EQ out and actually having lots of low end excitement is really good for the mics because it keeps the cymbals and drums in balance. So it works really nicely for me. Um, does look weird having duvets around the place, but because the roof here is like an A-frame with beams along, the, the duvets just sit along that plane. So it, like my thought was that that would make like a bass trap that steps in distance from the roof because it's sitting like that against the thingy, you know, the thing. My bodging acoustician job didn't go as so badly. Ikea for the win. So this is my drum kit here. This is where I'm spending most of my time up here. I'm pretty much always working on some session or I'm making a video or streaming or recording for monuments stuff or whatever. You know, this is pretty much what this room is 
focused around, so that's why so much space is dedicated to the kit. It's a pretty perfect area now. For a long time I was struggling having like a laptop on the side and then I'd record a bit and then I'd hunch up and I'd do my edits or whatever, comp a bit, listen again. And also while I'm playing, I, I like to look at the DAW, if, especially if I'm doing a session and I don't know the song like too well, I can kind of learn as I go, but I'm a bit visual. I like to either make like a MIDI track along with while I'm playing or something to show me where the accents are coming up and I can read the piano roll on DAW like as well as I could read any sheet music and it's super quick to just like I'll, I'll put notes like an octave away from each other and that will just show like kicks and snares for me. That used to be a lot harder when the, when everything was down here but um, and mainly I was having real bad problems with my because I, I had a shoulder tear I know I've said it a million times but you know it affected me quite a lot and so if I'm playing and I'm looking down to the left and like straining this guy so that sucks so Recently, I picked up a massive TV. Um, I found someone selling it locally. Yeah, I bought it off of them and mounted it to the wall with this nice big extender. I can also angle it around to the side, so if I'm ever filming anything over in this sort of area near the computer, uh, where the camera is right now, then I can plug that into, like, this TV or via the computer, via the deck link and I can see the image there and I can kind of direct shots a little bit better, I can see the focusing and etc. Um, so that kind of makes things super easy when doing videography but also if I'm streaming I'm looking at everything, all the chat and everything on the screen right in front of me. Um, I had to get like a 42 inch TV in order to make it big enough to like see things but it's amazing what people are selling nowadays and how cheap you can pick these things up so another upgrade we did recently is um, we installed some air conditioning in here which has made the world a difference I don't know how I was working in here for so long without fresh air it's uh, so bad so bad for my health and like I have really bad hay fever and dust allergies so like it was just killing me like absolutely killing me um, it's it's night and day now that we've got air installed also keeping me cool while I'm playing. The choice of where this is in the room is more down to like this is an, the fact that this is an easy place to be able to grab drums off of the wall where we've got lots of other drum kits and snares to pick from um, but also the fact that the desk can be nearer the door um, it just kind of makes more sense this way. I've tried basically every layout under the sun in here and right now this is working perfectly. Let me talk a bit about this kit for now. Um, so this is a drum kit that I don't own. I've traded this kit with Middle Farm Studios. I traded my DW Collector's Kit for now um, on a temporary swap, basically. Um, it's a great kit. I played it on a lot of early Monuments tours. I used it for the recording of Gnosis and the Emanuensis. Um, but uh, the problem with it is that it doesn't have large sizes. It's like a 20 inch kick drum and a 14 inch floor tom. So that was cool when I was when I first got into drums and I didn't know much about it. But as I developed a style and I started to understand the tones of different drums, I really found 20 and 14 to just be too small and too limiting sonically. So the kit just sat on a shelf for forever. But when I was last at Middle Farm Studios doing some session work, Pete and I were just talking about maybe swapping a kit and I just asked if he had any kits that he never got the chance to use and he mentioned he had this Guru kit which never got used and it's incredible man like one of the things I love about it the most is that I mean for one you can lift the drums straight off of their mounts um, but yeah there's no drilling in these shells like at all it's incredible um, the shells are completely intact there's not even a vent hole to be found anywhere it's like amazing the decay is like nothing I've ever heard in my life so yeah it's an amazing drum the whole kit's like mad so I was a bit of a silly boy and I didn't talk about this snare drum while I was talking about snares so I'll tell you about it here this is my Brady 14 by 6.5 Tasmanian Blackwood snare drum and it is absolutely gorgeous but yeah it's great I've also got my vibe kit up on the wall at the moment um, I've been using it for so long and I love it to pieces the toms are just insane aluminium drums are just mad but uh, right now I'm just really loving having something different to work with um, but I'll totally use the vibe I also have this Tama Star Classic uh, Maple Bobinga kit that 
I'm borrowing from Nolly, um, who's got more drum kits than he has space to store at the moment. So he kindly let me borrow that. I haven't had a chance to set it up and use it yet, but we uh, we used it a bit in the studio, and it was like the kick drum I think we used for a session I did recently, and it was like, what is this? It's a like 14 inch kick. And I think it's the toms are 12, 14, and 16. So that's a very different setup for me. It would kind of force me to do like a one up, two down, maybe one up in the front and two on the sides. There's going to be proper drum comparison videos and stuff coming out on the channel in the near future. Um, I'm still thinking about upgrading my preamps and stuff before I do that so that you can really hear the differences because we'll be, you know, really isolating the tones. What I've got here works perfectly, but if I'm going to make that upgrade, I might as well make it work perfectly. And another thing that I forgot to mention earlier is some of the snare drums that I have, this collection that I've been building up. The drum shelf here, I actually built this with uh, my friend Maxi Kerno. He helped me to put this all up and it's made out of bits of wood I bought as well as um, an old bunk bed that I used to, I think my brother used to sleep on. Um, me and my brother both had these bunk beds that had uh, desks underneath of them. So it's all kind of homemade and it's all braced onto the wall and it works really well. It's really helped to have everything sort of there. So at the top, we've got this Vibe 13 by seven aluminium snare drum, which is an absolute beast. It's got this plexiglass ring inside of it, which is just phenomenal. It really adds to like the low end of the kit. Underneath that, we have this wonderful 14 by 6.5 inch Vibe aluminium snare. And this is insanely aggressive sounding. Um, I remember I used this drum when tracking for Hero in Error with Justin Hill and he absolutely loved that snare. Um, I haven't used it in a while because I've just fallen in love with a few other snares but it's sitting there waiting to be loved again. There's this 12 by 7 aluminium snare drum made again by Vibe and I used this on the recent Walk With Me In Hell cover video that you can check out because um, Chris Adler uses a 12 inch snare and I just really wanted that high end like smash in your face sound. I love that snare so much. I also picked up this DW 14 by five steel snare and I don't know anything about this apart from that it's like an old DW, it doesn't say collectors, uh, it's got die cast hoops and a trick throw off added to it and I got it for a bug in from a studio clearance. Um, it had a bit of a broken lug on it, which I managed to fix, and I absolutely love this snare. It's just insane, I really love the sound of it. So as well, I just wanna talk a bit about some of, the, uh, some, of the, some of the elements of the kit that I absolutely love. I've used this Pearl rack for like forever. It's an absolutely great drum rack. Uh, it's been all around the, like Europe with me. I was about to say it's been all around the world, but it never flies out of Europe, it's just, too big and bulky, but it's an amazing piece of kit and I've used it as long as I've been gigging properly. So as long as I've been in monuments for sure. So it's amazing. I use a, a variety of different bits of hardware, mainly Gibraltar cymbal, cymbal stands. They've all worked perfectly. There's a few odd bits and bobs that I've picked up on the road as I've expanded, some DW, some Tama, um, just a big old assortment. Um, I love the DW9000 hi-hat stand, it's like my favourite thing. Recently I got these uh, Pro 1V Bigfoot pedals by Trick, and they're insane, they've sped up my feet loads. I want to say a big thank you to Rob, a gentleman from Canada who gifted me these pedals very kindly. I'm in your debt, my friend. Thank you so much for them. And cymbals for now, I'm using Pure Alloy by Meinl. Um, they're incredible. Um, they're working super well. The crashes are mad. Um, that, that's, so the Pure Alloys that I'm using are the hats and the crashes. I have like a Byzance Splash, uh, a Benny Greb uh, Crasher Hats kind of as a stack slash mini hat that I like to open up a bit. I've got this ridiculous MB20 ride, which just has like the meanest bell on it ever. Um, a Classics Custom Extreme Metal China, which is like such a good sounding China for one, but also like almost unbreakable. I also have this stack, which is a combination of a 20 inch upside down China and a 19 inch crash on top with no um, fastener on the top. I've actually put tape around the spindle in order to stop it from like scraping against it and damaging the insides of the cymbal. Both cymbals are broken, so I don't mind at all, but it's an MB20 on the bottom, China, and it's a Byzance uh, traditional 19 inch medium thin. As for microphones, uh, talking about the kick, I've got a 
Beta 91 in there at the moment, which is just such a great kick drum microphone. Um, you put it in, it controls the bleed really well. It has great top end, great smack. I've got a vintage D12 on kick out and this homemade subwoofer, which is absolutely mad. My father helped me to mount this inside of a 13 inch drum. It's a 12 inch, 1500 watt car subwoofer. Really, really worn in. I really looked for a long time to just find a nice, cheap, dirty sub that had been taken out of someone's car after they've like blown their faces off with it for like a few years or whatever, just to make sure that voice coil is really nice and loose because I really like a kick drum that has lots of sustain. One of my favorite microphones that I use on the kit is the Behringer M201. I've only got three of them at the moment, um, so I'm using them snare top and the rack toms one and two. On my floor tom at the moment, I'm actually using an Audio-Technica ATM250DE, which is the dual element microphone, which is awesome, so good. And I'm using just the dynamic uh, portion of that because it's like a kick drum microphone basically. So that captures all the low end that I want. Spot mics on the hi-hat and the underneath the ride, there's a, they're both uh, Rode NT5s, really decent mics, super affordable, super clean. Uh, I really like the sound of them. I don't think they get too spiky for me, but then again, I run all of my mics through Soothe all the time because all cymbals are just too spiky for clean recording sounds, I feel like. And I stopped needing the microphone to be so clean as soon as I discovered um, Soothe by Oak Sound. If you don't know about that plugin, for God's sake, go check it out. It's like magic. It's literally magic. I love it. On the snare bottom, interestingly, I'm using an Aston Stealth. Um, I just threw this on just to see what would happen, and I, I think I either put it on G or D mode, depending on the uh, on the snare drum. The G mode is like for guitars; it has a bit of a four five hundred boost. So if I feel like the snare drum's lacking that four five hundred character, I'll just change it to that mode. But otherwise, I use the D mode, which is like dark or ribbon emulation inside the mic. It's not really like an emulator, it just changes the sound of the of the microphone through some fancy stuff inside the mic. And uh, yeah, that works really well for bleed control and it just getting all the body out of the drum. It's really, really nice. The overheads are Aston Starlights. They're fantastic, I really love them. They capture the kit perfectly. They, I use them on the hybrid mode and they pick up a lot of low end from the kit. They also have the perfect balance of like uh, kit smack to cymbal volume. Even when I'm hitting the heck out of my crashes and stuff, these mics aren't getting overwhelmed. The kit still sounds great in it. They respond really well to compression and EQ. Absolutely love them. Aston knocked it out of the park with those, for real. I've got these SM57s, as you can see one of them here. They're on either side of the kit and they just point out and up to the corners of the room and they just kind of give the kit this nice sense of space. Um, which allows me to glue in other elements. Like I have a chamber microphone that's normally out in the annex, which is like a, a little extension we've built onto the side of the room, mainly for storage and for a bit of extra soundproofing around the door area. Um, but it's a really lively little space, like, um, like a two by three meter space. And uh, I use this Aston Spirit, which I'm currently using as my microphone to record this audio. So I can't show you that right now. But yeah, that chamber microphone, plus those room mics and everything else mentioned here, that brings us up to 15 mics. I also use this talkback mic, which is um, an Aston Stealth, but currently that was attached to my desk while I was recording over there because I moved that between attached coming up from the desk and then some, and then otherwise I'll attach it. I have this cable hanging out here, which is for that, and then the Stealth will attach to this. and. I'll then have my 16th channel. But I also use that as a mono overhead if I'm doing a session recording, because having a, a stealth, like having um, an SM7B above the snare, you get so much cool like drum sound from it. So yeah, as a mono overhead, it's amazing to have. So I just leave that up there and just point it at the snare and let it do its thing. And that sounds wicked. Really like completes the sound of the overhead in a lot of ways. But yeah, that's pretty much everything from the drum standpoint. There's one other thing I want to show you if you come over here with me. And this over here is the keyboard I was talking about earlier. This is my Nord Stage 2. This is the 88 key uh, EX version of the Stage 2. It's incredible. I used this for a lot of work that I did while I wasn't able to play drums. I did quite a few functions with this. I used it uh, when I was playing for a short stint in the Toto Tribute Band 
which was tons of fun. Um, it has such incredible piano, organ and road sounds built in. The synth engine is awesome. It connects really nicely to computers. Um, I often record in a part, mess up a few notes, and then I'll adjust the MIDI in the door and then retrack this. Right now it's not connected because as I've been moving everything around a lot, you know, it's not been too easy. But the great thing about this stand is it's on wheels as well. Um, I'm not sure what the brand is of it, but it's a wheeled keyboard stand, which is super sturdy and it's got great adjustability in terms of its height. So the plan is for me to run some cables up over the ceiling into there. But um, I don't think I have enough long jacks at the moment to do that. And it's just, I also at the moment I have, as you can see, a ton of cables all over the place to kind of make up this new uh, camera setup which I'm currently using for my streaming. So I've got this cable going up and above for the GoPro coming down to the ATEM switcher I was talking about earlier, um, which is such an incredible piece of kit. Um, I really love how that works and how easy that's made the streaming. I'm controlling that with a stream deck, um, which is, uh, I don't actually have like a physical stream deck. I have like the stream deck mobile application, but it works just as well. And it's a super cheap subscription to basically have the full functionality of that alongside this thing called BitFocus Companion. That basically means that I can control via the network, I can turn on and off muting in the mixer on the XR18, as well as remote control macros and advanced camera switching on the ATEM using the ATEM software control app. The amount of things you can do with the ATEM Mini using that software controls, man. But yeah, speaking a bit more about those cameras, the cameras I actually have going on, this main camera that I'm doing this whole video with is my Blackmagic Pocket Cinema 4K. I also have this other 25mm Lumix lens, which is a uh, f1.7 25mm lens and yeah this is fantastic this one really has lovely bokeh and a great um, depth of field it looks great even in low light but when I'm trying to capture more of my surroundings I'm always using this 14mm lens so thanks for watching my little studio tour here I'm probably gonna do a version 2 if I get any more equipment or I change anything massively I hope you've enjoyed it please do consider subscribing if you want to see more content. I'm doing all sorts of stuff nowadays, tutorials alongside my normal playthroughs, and I'll be releasing stuff for my solo music as and when I get around to releasing that on here as well. Uh, yeah, there's always something coming out, and um, yeah, do check out the Twitch and my Discord as well. So some of the links that show off this equipment are affiliate links. They don't cost you anything to use, but they do help to support me in the channel if you do decide to purchase through them. But yeah, I really appreciate you taking a look and taking the time to check out what's going on here. If you have any questions, please do chuck some stuff down in the comments and just ask away. You can get in touch with me also at any of my socials. I'm always up for helping out fellow musicians who are trying to find a way to just do what they love doing with what they've got. So yeah, anyways, take care everyone, be well, and I'll see you on the next video. Cheers.